the story goes something like this, okay? So this guy, Slimey, right? He follows me on Twitter, and I'm like, oh, shit, I have to actually make good content now. Uh, so uh, here we are. F*** me. I was just talking in your Discord a couple days ago, and conversation comes around this guy, Mad Batwings. Now, Mad Batwings made a video on memory that I really, really don't like, so uh, I was like, uh, screw that video, I really hate it. And he was like, uh, screw you, you make it, and now uh, I guess we're here. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Also, check out Mad Batwings and Slimey's YouTube channels. Uh, yeah, see you in the video. Now, while this memory can remember a lot of stuff for you, I still suggest you remember a few basic math operations like that 1 plus 1 is 10. Either way, I'm gonna go over all of the versions and types of memory today. Uh, if you want to look at a certain part of the video, timestamps will be in the description. So, memory. Memory goes into two main categories, those being RAM and ROM, standing for random access memory and read-only memory. So why don't we go ahead and start with some RAM. How RAM works is that within a single cell of it, you can remember either a 1 or a 0, and it looks a little something like this. As you see here, I can input anything I want into it, but no matter what I do, nothing happens. That is because over here we have our write to memory and a read from memory function. The read does not remember anything here, it just passes it through. And this one, well, it just remembers it. So if I go ahead and remember to memory, no matter what I do, it'll remember that value. And if I read from it, that value will get outputted. So if I use a setup like this, what you'll see is that there is now two RAM cells or registers. Uh, it depends on use case. Either way, as you see, there is gain input and output. Well, the difference is that they have different write and read function. So if I attempt to input one, again, nothing happens. And I can remember that to either the left or the right one. And let's say we'll remember zero to the right one. Now, if I try to read the right one, nothing happens because zero is outputted and there's already zero. And if I try to read the left one, one is read. Now over here, I've gone ahead and placed two of these memory cells on top of each other. The top one is currently storing zero and the bottom one is storing one. I could exchange these values and simply remember them to the repeaters using the write to memory function, which I did now. As you see, the outputs exchange. That is because I do not have a write and read function only the right one. Now, this is only stackable up to 8 bits because of how glass towers work. With the 15 signal strength, it only goes that far. You could stack them further up, but it would increase the delay. So over here, I have what you would call dual read RAM. It's stackable up to 8 bits due to the same signal strength glass tower rule, but it has an 8 mechanic, and that is that it can be read to two different lines. And you can read different registers to different lines. Here, for example, this one is being read, and this one is not being read. If I want to read this one to, say, the second line, I simply activate that. Now, while there is multiple ways to do a system like this, most of them just use a comparator at low signal strength going through like that and activating some sort of system that is still lockable. You can read a single register to two different lines as well and compare a value to itself. Why this is good is because you can have A and B going into, for example, an adder, a subtractor, and an ELU. Now, it is important to state that please do not use this exact design. It is just for showcase purposes and I came up with it in like half an hour. There is better designs on OR, probably in Plot of Logic, and in other builds. Now, with quasi-connectivity, we can also do our register type function. How we would input is simply with the stop lever, but as you see, because the pistons are not being updated, they are not registering the input. If you want to update them, you simply do this. You can also write zero to them, of course. So you might have seen this massive ass tower earlier in the video and wondered what the hell is this? Well, this is a 64-bit dual read register. It's incredibly useful and it is designed by me and underscore Zebek on the OR server. Now how it functions is using walls and a lot of other magic stuff. It is 5 Hz pipelineable and it is incredibly useful. The input is over here. And it basically goes to all of these inverters. It goes through a bunch of logic, blah, 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 and it comes out. So why don't we save five from the top? Usually you go from the bottom, but it's hard to see from there. Uh, to the first register. 
and let's save. Then, with the second register. Believe it or not, that is currently being saved. All right, so now if we want to display five on the first one, we can do that. The second one, then we can do that. And if we want to display five on the second one, like that, and then it's like that. Lawless. Now, I must warn you in advance that if you use wall technology, it is not constant output, so all of the outputs will have to be flashed, and you will usually need to make logic that accepts one tick input. It is incredibly useful for any hybrid purpose, but it's not general purpose. Now, RAM has multiple subtypes. We have serial RAM, non-serial RAM, we have registers. Now, the difference between these are sometimes more intuitive than others. For example, registers and RAM. Well, the difference is basically that RAM is more compact than registers, and registers are usually easier to access, faster to access, and less compact. Something that is dual read would usually be a register, but you can also just say RAM, as the functionality is the same. For this example, I will use the simpler processing unit by Kugo. He is a mono nor, and uh, yeah, props to him for letting me use it. Over here we have serial RAM, the most compact type of it. It's just serial, and it's pretty compact. Well, it's incredibly compact, actually, as you see here. And it goes into what would be normal RAM. Now, uh... This is a little less compact, but it's still RAM, uh, because it is made mostly to be compact. But over here we have what you would call dual read registers. Now why these are registers is because they are less compact and closer to the main processing area. Now not to forget you hexadecimal nerds out there, there is of course hex RAM, and it looks a little bit like this. Both of these work, and they're also technically registers. So if you check like that, that is storing too from 1 to 15, by the way, due to distance. And as you see, that is accessible throughout the whole system. How it works is by looping the information. Now, you can access that information on either this block or this block or, well, any adjacent to those. The same is applied to this system. Another way that you can do memory is, of course, sequentially. So over here is a sequential memory cell. It remembers like 15 values, and as you see, that is all ones. If I were to unlock this, it will trigger that repeater in the sequence that it has remembered. Now, of course, I could change that sequence if I wanted to, and it would work practically the same way. Now, onto the last category of memory, that being read-only memory. A read-only memory functions is by, well, reading a value of ones and zeros in binary and possibly hexadecimal. Over here I have a binary setup that remembers and stores values for you to retrieve. For example, this is one on a 7 segment display. And this is E. Now of course there is a lot of variations and types of read-only memory. I'm sure you could think of a new one that isn't mentioned in this video, but I'm going to go over a few of my favorite ones. Alongside that one, we also have this type of rail memory that basically checks which of these blocks can be powered and which cannot, which results in a sequence. We also have observers and no observers on walls. This is infinitely stackable compared to most other designs, but it's not general purpose. We also have shulkers and barrels. Now how barrels and shulkers work is that they check which item in the hopper that is passing through is stackable and which is not, and they output different signal strengths based off of that. Shulkers are additionally useful because they can be dispensed with dispensers and picked up with pistons. Now the most compact way you can do redstone memory is with hopper minecarts on a hopper. How that works is basically whenever a hopper minecart is spawned it is put in an order of reading in the whole world and if you just put them in a certain order you could read millions and millions of data from a single block on a single hopper. Now of course this isn't very lag efficient and it would probably uh, destroy some hardware. And over here we have our final type of memory that being barrel memory. How it works is that basically the comparators read values, right? Now over here, 
uh, under here actually are the control lines. Basically how it works is that it powers all of them. Now these have the exact signal strength that it requires for them to power a certain amount of output. But with the redstone torch at the bottom, how it works is that it basically overrides all of them and doesn't write any of it. It's a very interesting design and it is incredibly useful. By the way, this is program memory for the CPU of Red Fruity, my plot neighbor. And that's everything for this video. I hope you learned something. If you want, you can like, subscribe, leave a comment. I would appreciate it a lot. Also check out Sloy May and Mad Batwings on YouTube. The links will be in the description alongside all of the world downloads and the timestamps, of course, if you want to ever return to the video. Also, thanks a lot to Kugo, a mod on Ore for allowing me to use his simple processing unit to showcase the use of RAM. Have a good day and see you next time.